Joining us at Pig and Peach TV, uh, I'm Seth Beverly. Jonathan Kennard is behind the camera. Hola. We call, we call him the cameraman. Yeah. yeah. So today, again, thank you for joining us. Today we're going to cover uh, something that's near and dear to my heart. This is a family recipe. This is my mom and my grandmother uh, from Jamaica. Uh, they are going to share with us, and we are going to share with you, oxtail and rice and peas. Boom. First step in this uh, recipe is we're gonna brown the oxtail. Yeah. Uh, and John, with his infinite wisdom, got like these thick cut, beastly bad boys. This thing must have been like the, the bowl. It's a sunbed. Yeah, grass fed, uh, organic uh, meats from upstate New York. Well, so so we'll, we'll, we'll put a link somewhere up. Or link in the description. I'm gonna put hot water on my face for no yeah. reason. Um, so we're gonna just melt in some butter and oil, or I guess, I don't know, clarif we're not clarifying. We're just melting butter and oil in the pan to uh, get it ready to rock. We're gonna brown the oxtail. We've had this marinating. John, you wanna walk us through what was your marinade? Sure, it's uh, Worcestershire sauce, uh, fresh garlic, mm -hmm. allspice, mm -hmm. salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Yeah. According to your mom's note. According to your mom's um, so we're just browning these guys. These guys rolling around, getting nice and brown. Start to see this dark uh, sort of. So this is a mixture on. of avocado oil. Oh, wow. And, uh, and butter. So, yep. So part of the reason you're going to see us mixing butter and oil quite often is that butter alone will burn if you want it at high heat. And if you mix in some neutral oil, like an, uh, an avocado oil or an olive oil, it'll keep that butter from burning, and you still get all the magic that the butter imparts. So, in case you're wondering. They call that butter all. Butter all, baby. They should, though. Um, so, it looks like what you've done, Seth, is you've, after browning the oxtail, you put that to the side, like you would any other cut of meat. Exactly. And then now we're going to saute our mise en place, correct? That's right, which is French. Which vegetables. would be sure. That is real. Over the last year and a half, I've, I've started, I don't cook anything until all of my mise en place is done and everything is ready. And my cooking has got elevated tremendously because of it. Because you can really pay attention to each and every detail of the cook. Uh, and you're not stressed out. It's a much more enjoyable experience. Right. When you take your time, get your mise en place done, get all your sauces together, uh, whatever you're going to need for that cook, get it ready. So Seth's adding thyme right now, uh, some fresh thyme that's plastic and Jamaican cuisine. Yep. Right, beverage. All about thyme. All about that thyme. As much thyme as you can get. If you need as much thyme as you need. That's right. And thyme is good. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm done with bad time puns. We still have time for that. But, uh... <laughs> there was time for one more. <laughs> oh, oh, nicely done. Yeah, um, look at that technique. That's all due to mise en place. I'm not kidding. Not that. <laughs> so, um, and this is like a thing, you don't have to do this. Um, obviously, you just saw me kind of take the de stem a bunch of the time. But I feel like growing up, there was always some, not all, but always some, like whole time spreads in there. Um, the other thing is like, I've watched a lot of like online to make you cook. Oh yeah. Like, don't be shy with time. Don't yeah. be shy with your peppers. Um, don't be shy like with garlic either. Those three things. You're gonna, you're gonna think it's too much. It's not. It's not. <laughs> when I was, when we were working on it, was gonna thicken into it too. I would say with the larger vegetables, you need them undercooked slightly because you're right. gonna be stewing them for a while, for about three hours. So you can actually leave them larger than this if you want to. They call me broody because I like to stew. Let's go. So we're gonna make the uh, sauce uh, that the, the stew that the oxtail is gonna go in. So we're gonna start with a uh, little classic grace. Um, just browning 
uh, the Dominican classic. Right, which I'm gonna do, uh, yay much. Yeah, that's about right. We're also gonna throw in uh, some garlic hoisin sauce. Flavors like hoisin or soy sauce are not uncommon in Jamaican cuisine. Um, you may not think it, but it's definitely a big part of what's going on. So the um, key is don't 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 feel like you have to be exacting in the measurements here, guys. Just kind of he's adding some black pepper now. Yeah. This is a in. Jamaican jerk kind of blend. It has thyme and garlic and salt and pepper, all spice. And I would go not too heavy with this. Don't go crazy because you don't want it to taste like jerk. It shouldn't right. specifically taste like jerk. Right. Um, but the, this is, is a nice. bit of a cheat, yeah. if you will. <laughs> it's a nice profile to add to yeah. the overall yeah. character that's going on. Um, and then again, because we didn't have the uh, molasses and we substituted the hoisin sauce, which is plenty thick and, and has sweet. some sweetness. Yeah, yeah plenty sweet. It's just sweet. not as sweet as molasses. molasses. Um, so subbing some sugar, especially a brown sugar, or in this case it's a turbinado, is a good way to sort of make up for some of those sugar cane sort of molasses qualities um, that even a hoisin sauce that was sweet wouldn't have the same flavor profile. Essentially what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna add more thyme, fresh thyme. Then we'll add some, some hot sauce. Anyways, we're gonna add beer since we don't have any stock. Um, we're not adding, again, a stout, which probably would be one of the things on hand. Um, but, that in this case... magical. Yeah. In this case, this will do just fine. Also, because of the, you know, the wheat content and the sugar content, it'll thicken up moistly. Uh, the complement to the oxtail, which is like a stew, uh, which implies broth and liquid, and so you need to put that over something. I mean, you could have it like a soup but, or a stew, but then you might be missing out on something. So what we're gonna do is pair it with what's typically paired with, which is rice and peas. Um, today, we're doing, uh, I guess, like a more accessible version. Instead of doing a scotch bonnet, we're not gonna do scotch bonnet, we're gonna do the sriracha. And instead of doing peas, which is pigeon peas or gonga peas, which is uh, the European name for Congo peas, which these things come from India, about 3,000 plus years ago. They're like a major staple in the diet of like a lot of Indochina. Um, they're a protein for a lot of people that don't eat meat. Um, so they were brought over with the slave trade that ended up in West Africa. They were brought over with uh, East and West African actually slaves and ended up as a part of like the normal American diet for a long time. They kind of fell by the wayside. They're very big in Central and South America still. Um, but they call them pigeon peas or Congo peas, gonga peas in Jamaica they call it. Uh, and we're gonna substitute those with kidney beans because they are uh, an easily attained and viable substitution. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start by putting in my kidney beans because I always like to let them cook down as much as possible. Um, we're also gonna add coconut milk. So again, we're gonna use this graces, which you can pretty much get at any supermarket. Oops, I'm going to try not to explode coconut milk all over ourselves. So this is about a cup of water, guys, a cup of rice, uh, a can of coconut milk, a can of kidney beans, one onion chopped finely. This is a healthy amount of, uh, of thyme, typical of Jamaican cuisine, guys, don't be scared. Uh, salt, pepper, and scotch bonnet pepper, or which we're going to uh, use sriracha. Just the notch of sriracha. And then we can add more later. Mm -hmm. Turn down Except our oxtail. Turning down our oxtail. Put simmering oxtail. Should be nice and dark and thick at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, we might go ahead and showcase it a little bit. It's a little bit, it's a little bit thick. Yeah. Because we're not in a sealed or large pot. Mm -hmm. It's vented some of this liquid. But normally I'm gonna reconstitute it with a little more water and then slow it down and let it simmer for a long time. All right? So at this point we're gonna cover our rice, we're gonna stir, we're gonna cover, and we're gonna let it simmer. And yes, I'm stirring with a large knife because I'm a boss like that. Um, so we have finished cooking our oxtail and our rice and peas, uh, and we've substituted the peas for the gunga, the, uh, the gunga peas for the kidney beans. We've got uh, sriracha instead of our uh, scotch bonnet. So all the details are there, but you got the broad strokes. It's like you, you brown it, you saute the veg, you start your sauce, you throw everything in there and you just simmer it nice and slow for hours 
and hours and hours. Um, so I'm gonna start with the rice and peas and some of the gravy here. Um, I mean, it's just amazing, really. Um, I'm gonna let John describe it because it's, it's pretty, I've never actually thought about how to describe it before, but I've had it so many times. It's super tasty, but I am gonna do this little number here. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tilt this a little bit. I'm just gonna show you what's gonna happen with this beef. Look at that. I mean, look, look at that. Fork tender, for sure. Just coming right off the bone. Got a little bone there in the middle. And it's just, it's amazing. So, my turn. Mmm. Mmm. So, man, this is just so tender. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's funny. It's Full funny. disclosure, this is not, I mean, I've done oxtail many times. This is the best one that we've ever done. Uh, I used to cook a lot uh, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and like no one really, like she was just the best. She was the best cook. Um, Mother Deer, my grandmother, does certain things better than Ma did, although I don't think we're allowed to talk about that. Uh, or I, I think I've always kind of done like a, my iteration, my version of it, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, we've got a little pumpkin. What's this? This What's is the newest up? member. What's up, Maggie? Of the Pig and Peach crew. What's up, Maggie? This is Miss Mag Magnolia Blue. Ooh. Magnolia Blue Canard. Ooh. This is our new bulldog puppy. She's like that. It smells great. She's like that. Give me, give me some, give me some oxtail. Oh, too spicy give for you. Give me some oxtail. Too spicy you for you. You can't have this, dude. Um, you know, they are I can't stop eating this. Well, don't. Let's just say goodbye. Wow. Guys, thank you so much for joining us again. We hope this was fun and informative. And, uh, if you liked what you saw, follow us, like, subscribe, share, um, and be on the lookout for our next video. Appreciate you guys. Catch that Adios. <laughs> See what I did there? I like I that did. cameraman.